Joe, let's just start with at, at the end of the second quarter there when things started to fall apart. What were, what were you noticing? What, why did that start to happen? Um, they went to their switching defense. Uh, we got a little stagnant on the offensive end, turned the ball over. And then, um, you know, we talk a lot about end games, you know, ending quarters, ending halves. And, you know, in the beginning of the year, we watched a lot of film on when you give teams light of day at the end of a quarter or an end of the half. Um, in the NBA, it, it's, it's going to be a close game. Um, and so we got off to a really good start playing the right way. And uh, we just let, you know, let the foot off or the gas and, you know, it cost us. It seems like this is a, a constant with, with this group that they'll play well and then there's a point, you know, happened against the Cavs. You let your foot off the gas and, and it's hard to get it back. I mean, wh what's the message to the team there? about finishing and, and why can't you get it back? Yeah, I mean, that was the first time we couldn't get it back. So, um, you know, I thought throughout the year we've done a good job of maintaining our composure and our poise for majority of the season. Um, you know, I think in moments like that, um, you know, when the other team is, starts to play well and changes their mindset, we just have to kind of adjust to your environment. It's hard. Um, and so, you know, more importantly than that, um, they beat us in every analytical category possible. And if we don't commit to the margins, no matter how hard we play, we're not going to win. And so they got more threes up. They got more shots up. They got more free throws. They got more offensive rebounds. And we, they turned it over less. So you can play as hard as you want. You're not going to win with that. It, it just feels like when this happens multiple times, it, we know. They're the other team's an NBA team, and, and they'll make their runs, and we know all that. But y you had them up 28. And, and a chance to put them away. Yeah. This, at that point, why, why can't you put them away at that point? Um, because you let your foot off the gas, they make a couple shots, they feel good, you have a couple empty possessions, and then they start to see that it's a closer game. And it just is a, it's a matter of they, the, you have to put pressure on execution. And you know, it, it's about the end games. If you don't end the quarter well, you give a team life. If you don't end a half well, you give a team life. So you, you call a timeout five minutes into the game when you're up 13 to five, because I, I think Jason had kind of toyed around. Jalen threw an alley-oop to Robert off the glass early. You, you guys were enjoying the lead. What happened mentally to where you guys weren't able to get that back? And what did you say to them at halftime? Because it seemed like it kind of continued mm -hmm. in the second half. Bridges steps into an open three to begin mm -hmm. the second half. Like, why weren't you able to stop the tide mentally? Not execution wise. Yeah, I called the timeout because the media was coming up in like 13 seconds and it was our ball and we had gone down, back, down, back, down, back. And so um, it was actually to get Rob a blow. Um, so I liked the way we were playing at that point. And, you know, I don't have an answer for that. Um, that's just, that's, that's human nature. You have to battle human nature. And if you want to separate yourself, the teams that don't fall into that trap. Um, but I'm not going to overreact to that. It, it happens. It happens in the NBA. Um, I've seen it. Um, and other games, um, we have to be able to learn from it. So, you know, I'll be more upset if it happens again, if we're in another situation, more upset about the Cleveland situation than I am about tonight in the standpoint of, you know, finishing a game and being up and ending a game. Um, so that's just something that we have to learn from. Is there, sorry, sorry, Jay, is there something like, is there a matter of you guys hitting shots but not liking the way you're playing? Because it seemed like shots are going down, but it seemed like the style was getting a little... Hated. It's funny you say that. I actually was more nervous in the beginning of the game because we shot less threes, and they were shooting more. And so they were two for 11, and we were only, I think it was maybe three for six. Three for six. So I was actually worried because we were scoring, but it wasn't because we were making shots. It was because we were getting layups. And they are a very analytically sound team. And so I knew the tide was going to shift because they were going to continue to shoot threes. And if we didn't play at a level of shooting threes and getting offensive rebounds and taking care of the ball that that was going to cost us. Um, so that's what I was thinking um, as we were winning was, you know, we're getting a lot of easy twos. They're missing. They were six for 21 from three at one point. Um, and credit to them, they kept shooting. And then they kept getting offensive rebound and they got to the free throw line and turned it over less. So in that stretch in the second quarter where we started to turn it over, the shot, the shot differential was the same. And then they started to get more shots, get more shots, and we had empty possession, empty possession. You played almost the entire roster tonight. How much of the different combinations you're putting out there and trying different guys and 
different spots was kind of like analytically informed based on like these are combinations we think would work versus just trying to find somebody that could provide a spark to actually execute. Um, a little bit of both yeah I, mean, I think it was a little bit of an analytical approach a little bit of trying to find a spark can we go on a kind of get it have someone in there that can get us on a 4-0 run 6-0 run something like that so I guess at, at what point do you kind of like break off from like this is the lineup that we've calculated should be working best to just finding like someone that you think has it that night yeah just kind of when you get to that uh, it just a, just depends. I, mean, I don't. I don't. I don't know. It just kind of depends on how the game is going. Is, was there a moment tonight where you felt like you put someone in there and they maybe you didn't expect that they were going to fill the role they did, but they actually were able to help change things? Um, I mean, I thought everybody. Nothing worked. Let's put it that way. How about that one? I'm trying to be more generous. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with a long answer to help your question. I don't have one. Nothing worked. Fair enough. Yeah. Is there, uh, is there any update on Rob's status, Joe? There is not. I haven't seen him yet, no. And you mentioned that this, obviously not necessarily exactly this scenario, but this happens a lot more in the NBA now with the amount of threes that are shot. You know, see big leads. Yeah, that's a, a that's a huge thing. It's hard to cut you off, but you're yeah. right. Like, a team that plays that fast and a team that shoots that many threes, if you relax even for six possessions, that, that could potentially be 12 points. That could be 15 points. And so I think with the rate, at, and I know you guys all think it's funny, but the three-point attempt rate is the most important stat in the game of basketball because of the pace of play, because of the shot selection, and because of the ability to go on runs. And so when you get out shot by 14 threes, that the potential points there are crucial because uh, it gives you way more shots and it gives you more opportunities. And so to me, I'm not really that surprised or worked up about it because a 24-point lead in the first half in the, today's NBA with the way offenses are means almost nothing. Well, and, and I was the, the sorry to cut you off. No, it's fine. What I was yeah. going to ask was because of that and the fact that this does happen on a, a regular basis, is there um, is there even more of an emphasis as you're watching things start to go away? Like and you called a couple of quick timeouts early to try to reverse that the other way because there, it isn't like it used to be where a 28-point lead was a 28-point yeah. lead. Now things – obviously change a lot faster than that. Yeah, yeah. What was your question to that? No, I just, it was, as you were watching that start to go away, it, are you more quick to react than you would be in maybe normally because we've seen that happen so many yeah. times? Yeah, and try to take, you know, the one that um, to me kind of got going was, was Royce O'Neal's corner three in the first quarter right in front of their, uh, I can't remember what, in the first or second quarter, but right in front of their bench, you know. Um, and so I... Because, you know, it's, it's funny, Coach Vaughn has said in numerous press conferences against us, they have to outshoot us from three in order to beat us. And, that, and, and he was very aware of that. And he did it, they did a good job of that, of limiting ours and getting theirs. And, you know, that's an important, you know, the margins are very, very important. Do you feel like your team consistently respects the opponent and the opponent's ability to go on those runs and, and, and shoot the threes and, and do all the things that you're saying? Um, we definitely have a respect for the opponent because we were up 28, so I think we definitely respected them. I don't think most guys realize the potency of runs in the NBA in the first half because of the pace in the three-point shot. And so I think our team definitely respects other teams. You know, I, I, like I said, I think this is a one-off and something that's happened uh, very, very rarely. I think it's very hard for a player to understand that because of the rate at which people play offense, if you have four empty possessions, those could be costly at the other end. Joe, you, you're obviously always emphasizing the amount of threes you guys need to take. Um, in a game like this, you mentioned the differential. What led to you guys not being able to generate the amount of threes that you need? Yeah, they, once they switched, um, they changed defenses and it slowed us down and we couldn't get stops because of the free throw line and the offensive rebound, and then we weren't able to generate those early offense ones um, and kind of get their defense spread out. And so um, we struggled to create advantages versus their switching, which, you know, we couldn't get them off our body. We couldn't create two-on-ones. We couldn't get the one more pass. You um, prefer – sorry. You, no, you yeah. prefer a free-flowing style offensively. Is there anything you pull from this, from your position, that you could have done to hinder the runs a little bit? Yeah, I think um, just maybe uh, call a few more sets. Um, you know, maybe try to generate a couple more easy baskets during that second quarter stretch uh, where we had those empty possessions, for sure. So besides taking more threes. And, and it's not just that. It's the, it's, it, the three-point attempts are very important, but it's also getting more shots, offensive rebounds, turnovers, free throws. Like, all those things kind of add into that. 
is there anything you can else you can learn from this game besides the, just the schematically? Is there something mental you can take away from this game? Yeah, I think you know it's the same. There's there's no um, coincidence that the end of the Cleveland game in this situation, and so it's just you have to be able to handle. You, you can't be comfortable. Um, it's hard to say. It's hard. It's really hard to do. But um, you try to. Uh, work through situations like that so that you say, oh, like, is it really preventable? No, it's not. Every team has done it. And so um, to me, the area of growth and the opportunity comes in making sure it doesn't happen again. You know, we're in that situation again. Thank you. Thank you.